Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Danny Hunter. I'm a senior scientist at uh, Biodiversity International, um, now formally recognized as the Alliance of Biodiversity International and, and SEAT. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the historic uh, work of Biodiversity International um, on the promotion of African uh, leafy vegetables. And I must apologize for not being able to be there in um, face to face. Um, unfortunately, the dates and times clash with with other other commitments. Uh, Biodiversity International has a long standing uh, commitment to promoting the conservation and use of the enormous reservoir of diversity of Africa's traditional edible plants. Uh, going back many decades to to the present day. Um, however, this uh, presentation will be uh, brief in terms of the areas that it focuses on, and it will um, the presentation will provide a brief recap on the early work that Biodiversity International was involved in um, in terms of promoting African leafy vegetables to explore their genetic and nutritional diversity, link farmers and farmer organizations to markets, um, to reconnect consumers to traditional foodways, and also looking at um, uh, enhancing community awareness and understanding of um, African leafy vegetables, building capacity, and um, importantly, strengthening policy advocacy work. Um, and finally, the Presentation will focus on more recent work that was supported by the Biodiversity for Food and Nutrition project, um, otherwise or more familiarly known as the BFN project, uh, which undertook or explored the opportunity to use schools as a platform to promote dietary diversity and healthy eating habits among school children by integrating African leafy vegetables into school gardens and into school meals programs. It has been long recognized that African leafy vegetables are important in the diet of many African communities and being accessible to low income communities, they play a crucial role in, in food security and also in improving the nutritional status of poor families. However, despite these uh, many beneficial attributes, leafy vegetables have generally been neglected by both researchers and also by consumers. And I don't think I really need to get into that in much detail. And though I think the reasons behind that will be very much explored um, in this wider conference. However, this neglect um, is one of the reasons why the diversity of uh, African leafy vegetables became very threatened in the 1980s. And based on this context, biodiversity scientists at that time, in partnership with local research and development organizations, realized the need um, in the early 90s to develop a strategy to help conserve leafy vegetables through sustainable use. If, um, if, that, if we were to prevent them from becoming further marginalized and ultimately um, disappearing from fields and also disappearing from our plate. So Biodiversity International's um, first major project on African leafy vegetables uh, was the Biodiversity of Traditional, Traditional Leafy Vegetables in Africa project, um, which worked with farmers, NGOs, universities, hospitals, uh, national research institutes, and other organizations across sub-Saharan Africa to conserve African leafy vegetables and focus on increasing their production and consumption, um, as well as safeguarding the, um, the conservation, uh, the genetic diversity base of African leafy vegetables. So between 1996 and 2004, work was undertaken to collect, characterize and analyze um, the nutritional value of many um, African leafy vegetables before identifying um, a select group of priority species um, and also focusing on enhancing genetic material and improving horticultural practices in the marketing and processing um, of those African, of those selected and prioritized African leafy vegetables. 
Uh, during phase one, which ran from 1996 to 2000, and in, uh, which partnered with um, Kenya, also Botswana, Cameroon and Senegal and Zimbabwe in this project, the main focus was on the documentation of indigenous knowledge um, on, on the diversity and use of Af African leafy vegetables. Uh, there was a lot of work on the general genetic diversity of African leafy vegetables, but there was um, a strong focus on the identification of eight priority species, which included amaranth, uh, amaranthus, um, spider plant um, and cow peas, which were selected for, for much more detailed um, research. There was also a strong focus on germplasm, germplasm sampling, collecting and characterization, and in parallel with that, um, a focus on the nutritional analysis, the food compositional analysis of the genetic diversity um, that was presented by African leafy vegetables. Uh, there was also quite a strong focus um, on research into the effects of storage and processing techniques on that nutritional quality of those leafy vegetables. And phase one also identified some of the key constraints in the production and the consumption of African leafy vegetables, which was largely around uh, seed systems and barriers and constraints to do with seed supply, seed availability, seed availability and, and seed quality. Uh, just a slide to illustrate some of the priority species of phase one of the, of the biodiversity of traditional leafy vegetables in Africa project. Using the knowledge gained during phase one of that project, phase two, which uh, ran from 2001 to 2004, aimed to exploit the potential of African leafy vegetables to improve the nutrition and food security of vulnerable groups, namely women and children. And phase two of this project also focused on increasing the in situ conservation and um, ex situ conservation approaches to conservation of leafy vegetables as well, as well as looking more closely at sustainable production, sales and consumption of um, uh, priority leafy vegetables in, in participating countries. In a meeting convened in Nairobi by Biodiversity International back in September 1998, at the end of the first phase of this project, uh, key areas to follow up were identified. Um, and these, again, focusing on a, a list of priority, priority species, had activities that explored further the collection, description, uh, mapping and conservation of priority leafy vegetables, the enhancement of um, genetic material of those priority species, um, different approaches and te techniques to improving horticultural practices for the production of African leafy vegetables, much more support for, for seed systems and also in particular for on-farm management of African leafy vegetables. Um, as well as improvements in terms of handling, marketing and processing, um, as well as um, increased dissemination of information about African leafy vegetables to target groups. And with a strong focus on capacity building of um, staff within national agriculture research systems to also undertake um, and sustain more evaluation, conservation and promotion um, of the use of African leafy vegetables. As part of that second phase of the project, there was a considerable focus on supporting farmers in urban and peri-urban areas of Nairobi um, with much more intensive agronomic support um, and research and also trying to link those farmers to formal markets. Um, and initially this included um, outlets like the Achumi uh, supermarket chains, but also other city markets. And promotion was done through a series of field days and cooking demonstrations, media programs, and also street campaigns to promote um, leafy vegetables. And this slide just um, demonstrates uh, some of those activities to get leafy vegetables um, incorporated into um, supermarkets and other urban uh, market outlets as well. So that by 2006, consumption had significantly increased in terms of the demand for African leafy vegetables. Most markets uh, were now selling African leafy vegetables, um, or most supermarkets, sorry. 
And restaurants had also started to include many African leafy vegetables in, in their menus. In 2007, three years after the programme ended, um, a study was undertaken to assess the impact and the sustainability of the project's efforts in Kenya, um, uh, production, consumption, marketing and nutritional awareness was analyzed in four regions using a combination of quantitative and qualitative methods um, that, folk, that highlighted um, that nearly two thirds of households surveyed um, that growing African leafy vegetables had increased their income significantly with women being the main beneficiaries. The percentage of farmers planting at least one species of African leafy vegetable increased by almost 23%, while nearly half of the households surveyed had increased their consumption of leafy vegetables. The production of African leafy vegetables in peri-urban areas around Nairobi uh, was found to have increased by more than tenfold, tenfold between 1997 and 2007. And the project had also made a significant impact in terms of leveraging what it was doing with other partners and other efforts um, that led to um, significant increases in the marketing of vegetables, especially um, in, in supermarkets. And approximately um, about 160 US dollars was uh, invested per farmer per year over the life span of the project. And on average, each farmer increased their net income by about 200 US dollars per, per year. Following the end of phase one of um, that project, subsequent years saw a number of organizations, including NGOs and universities, become increasingly interested and start to implement um, other projects on African leafy vegetables. Uh, one such project, which has tried to build on this research and knowledge platform established for African leafy vegetables, particularly in Kenya, has been the, the Biodiversity for Food and Nutrition project, uh, the BFN project, uh, which among its participating countries included um, Kenya. The BFN project uh, was, a, was a unique project that was funded by the Global Environment Facility Unique um, in terms of um, it was the first time that the Global Environment Facility that really had funded a project that focused on mainstreaming um, nutrient rich underutilized species such as African leafy vegetables for the purpose of um, improving diets and nutrition and trying to mainstream that food biodiversity into um, food security and nutrition policies. The BFN approach um, is one that has had considerable country ownership and country buy-in. Um, it's very much focused on building partnerships and relationships at a country level. Um, it's based on three major linked pillars or components. Uh, the first one of which is strengthening the evidence base for the nutritional value of food biodiversity, such as African leafy ve vegetables, and using that evidence base or that improved knowledge base to improve the, the mainstreaming of biodiversity across sectors, but particularly within those sectors related to nutrition and, and food security. And this is all underpinned with a very significant program of work um, on, on creating uh, more awareness and understanding of this food biodiversity. So as an example of the work to improve the evidence base um, on food biodiversity in Kenya. And again, the focus here was in Western Kenya in Busia County, where the project pr primarily focused on African leafy vegetables growing in, in that county, in that region, and in partnership with national universities, but also in partnership with international organizations and other universities involved in the BFN project. And this slide just highlights uh, two graphs, which illustrate the superior nutritional content um, of uh, vitamin A expressed in beta carotene equivalents and iron uh, content in African leafy vegetables, um, a selection of African leafy vegetables shown in various shades of green in, in both of these graphs. And compared to the, <clears throat> the, the equivalent uh, composition of beta carotens and iron in, in 
the more exotic um, lettuce crop shown in, in, in the yellow bars on both of the, those graphs here. So in Kenya and in Boothia County, a large focus was using that improved knowledge base on the nutritional value of African leafy vegetables to try and improve the, the policy and the enable, enabling environment to, to better mobilize um, African leafy vegetables at a county level. And one of the achievements um, that was done in that regard was to um, formulate with a cross-sectoral task force that was largely made up of the county uh, local government administration but also other actors in Busia as well to come up with the the uh, Busia County Biodiversity Conservation Pol Policy in 2018 and this really is the very first biodiversi biodiversity policy of its type in all of Kenya's 47 countries and within that policy there is a lot of promotion and a lot of support for the, the mainstreaming of African leafy vegetables um, across many different sectors and also looking at many different possible interventions and opportunities, including local food procurement of African leafy vegetables. So this policy document in many ways, I think offers, offers a very useful example or reference point for other counties in Kenya to develop similar um, policies a large focus of the BFN project in Kenya was to look at opportunities to better promote African leafy vegetables and um, around, especially around school feeding programs. And this was especially around alternative school feeding models, such as the home growing, home growing school feeding um, program, which some of you might be familiar with, which aims to link school food procurement to local foods and to local family farmers and local growers. And the various elements um, are illustrated uh, from farmer organization through food production, um, right through to distribution um, of local foods to schools um, uh, to children, which represents the, the framework of the home uh, growing school feeding program. The home growing school feeding programs offer a unique platform for re realizing multiple, multiple benefits for children, but also for the communities in which they live. Uh, school food procurement um, and school meals, if linked to local producers and local foods, has been shown to contribute to not only diversifying diets and enhancing uh, educational outcomes of school children, but also to engender economic development um, of local farmers and local households and local communities by ensuring a regular market, um, especially in the catchment areas of, of schools. So with that in mind, the BFN project was interested to explore if local farmers producing African leafy vegetables in, in Busia County could be linked to supplying local schools in such a way. In 2013, under the framework of the BFN project, a survey was carried out in Busia County by the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, which identified pockets of small scale farmers, mostly women and youth, who were actively growing African leafy vegetables. Um, at the same time, small scale entrepreneurs from the community based organization um, known as Sustainable Income Generating Investment, Investment Group. Um, or alternatively, the Singy Group, aspire to increase their production of organically grow, uh, produced African leafy vegetables. But at the same time, they faced very significant challenges linked to the production and market demand for these commodities. Uh, Singy farmers also lack the basic skills to manage their farming as a business and to, to negotiate contracts and tenders um, for food procurement that were um, coming out uh, from local schools. So based on a conceptual model that aimed to boost both supply and demand for African leafy vegetables, a pilot uh, study was launched in 2014, jointly funded by the BFN project and the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research to test how schools could offer predictable and stable markets for smallholder farmers in Busia County. And basically the conceptual model for the home grown school feeding uh, program um, or underpinning the home grown school feeding program 
to be implemented in Busia. Simultaneously address constraints on the supply and demand side of the school feeding program. Both in order to increase the capacity of smallholder farmers to produce and supply locally available um, underutilized micronutrient rich um, leafy vegetables, while at the same time creating desirability and informed demand for these foods, particularly via um, school feeding programs. But the pilot study, the pilot project also looked at other um, parallel market um, outlets for these African leafy vegetables um, as well. So on the one hand, um, the supply of improved seeds and training on sustainable agricultural production, um, integrated pest management and the use of um, seasonal calendars to plan and guide production ensured farmers were able to guarantee a steady supply of African leafy vegetables for schools. And in addition, the project adapted a farmer business school um, model that was developed um, to support training on farmer group cohesion, um, collective responsibility, also looking at improving value addition and marketing um, that ensured the trained farmer groups were able to, uh, to sustain these established market linkages and make their agricultural enterprises that bit more um, profitable. While on the demand side, um, a number of cooking demonstrations and uh, nutrition education workshops and awareness raising activities and campaigns on the nutritional value of African leafy vegetables ensured um, or contributed to increased demand for these crops. This uh, slide uh, just illustrates some of the appropriate home garden technologies that were employed and promoted by the, the community-based Singy Umbrella Farmer um, Organization Group in Busia County. As I mentioned, the farmer business school model that was developed was very much uh, a critical element um, or platform for the implementation of the um, pilot study on homegrown school feeding in, in Busia. And that was used as a platform to train and build capacity of farmer groups. Um, and we focused on, on 25 farmer groups in the initial um, pilot study. To, be, to empower them to build capacity to help them organize themselves in a much more productive way through production groups and, and cooperatives, but also looking at building capacity so that they were much more efficient in terms of handling and processing and financially managing their um, agricultural um, business. Uh, through the farmer um, business school model, there was also a considerable focus on training and promotion of um, appropriate sustainable agricultural practices. So farmer groups were in a position to sustainably produce um, nutritious foods in sufficient quantity and quality uh, to meet the expected uh, rising demand for African leafy vegetables from institutional markets such, such as schools. The farmer groups, there was also considerable um, training um, provided for farmers to undertake um, gross margin analysis to establish equitable prices for selling of African leafy vegetables uh, to schools but also a major focus on improving the negotiation capabilities of farmer groups so that they could complicate or they could complete compete sorry in the complicated tender process um, uh, for uh, foods uh, to be supplied to local schools through the farmer business school uh, platform there was also a significant focus on training farmer groups to better understand food safety regulations and quality control which is particularly important when supplying food to school children through school meals also um, significant training on looking at ad added value to their african leafy vegetables uh, through the production of amaranth flour and also looking at dried leafy product products for the supply of leafy vegetables um, out of season. The final stage in terms of the homegrown school feeding um, framework um, or value chain is the distribution of 
food by local farmers to the schools for school meals. And this is uh, this was one particular area where many of the farmer groups faced considerable barriers and constraints. Um, it was oftentimes very expensive to um, hire transport or to employ people to transport um, the leafy vegetables uh, to schools. Um, so much so that a number of the schools, especially those schools in the Busia area, who had um, access to unused fertile land on the school property. And in a number of instances, the schools provided this unused land to, far to the farmer groups uh, within the Singy Umbrella uh, Farmer Organization so that the farmers could grow their African leafy vegetables directly on the school land and provide automatically to the local canteen on the school premises and thereby reducing their transport and their distribution costs very significantly. Further um, along the, um, the food, uh, the homegrown school feeding program um, framework, uh, there was also um, on the demand side, there was also a very significant focus on uncovering and researching a number of the traditional recipes um, around the preparation of African leafy vegetables. And these were documented together with new and novel recipes using African leafy vegetables um, and published in the, in the um, recipe book that you can see on the right hand side of this slide. And this recipe book was used in many instances throughout training workshops and also when working with canteens and, and school cooks to better promote African leafy vegetables. So as is uh, mentioned uh, further down on the slide, uh, there was also a significant focus on working with canteen staff and, and school cooks to build capacity so that they could better prepare and present African leafy vegetables in the, in the school meals program. Again, just some um, a slide showing some photos from various activities related to the um, school feeding program in Busia. Um, the slide on the top left hand corner um, shows uh, farmers working on school land to harvest some of their African leafy vegetables to supply to the school canteen for school meals. We also work very closely with school kids in many of the schools. Um, to help them establish school gardens and other um, production practices for leafy vegetables. And to the extent that uh, a number of the school kids were also able to um, sell some of their African leafy vegetables to school canteens and use the funds that they received um, to contribute towards their fees, but also to the purchase of, of stationery. And the two photographs at the bottom on the left hand side um, from one of the nutrition um, education and cooking classes with the local communities with breastfeeding mothers and also some of the high school kids receiving their African leafy vegetables um, now as part of their, their school meals. Since the, pro the pilot project was launched in one school uh, beginning um, back in mid 2016 um, and at that stage that was a school that was catering for 410 students. The Farm to School Network in Busia County is now providing, or by the end of the project, was providing healthy school meals to approximately 5,500 um, pupils. The project also focused very much um, on training a large number of cooks and kitchen staff in traditional recipes and food preparation, nutrition and food safety, training farmers in enhanced business skills, um, and also working with several groups that to improve their negotiation skills in terms of um, discharging their tenders to various institutions. The pilot project also resulted in significant profits to farmer groups um, and those supplying African leafy vegetables uh, to schools per group. The average yearly um, profit was about 540 US dollars per year while receiving schools um, were able to make considerable savings over, over um, um, a yearly period um, that averaged at about 360 U US dollars uh, per school. Uh, so undoubtedly the demand for indigenous vegetables in, school has, uh, in schools has uh, 
risen um, very much within the scope of this pilot study. And for the first time, we're actually seeing specific tenders for the supply of African leafy vegetables. I just wanted to finish off by highlighting some recommendations. Obviously, there's opportunities and recommendations across multiple areas of conservation production and consumption of Afri African leafy vegetables that are needed in order to address their potential contribution. Um, and this can be from increasing basic R&D budgets to improving seed supply. But many of these, no doubt, will be addressed elsewhere in this conference. So here I would like to just flag a few recommendations or opportunities on the food environment consumption side um, of that um, area. And first and foremost, I think one of the key areas that we need to focus more on is the establishment of effective research partnerships that can help us better understand consumer preferences and behaviours and nutritional value um, of African leafy vegetables. We certainly need to know more. And linked to that and building on that knowledge base, we also need to establish much more effective multi-sectoral platforms, which are necessary to create better enabling environments to mainstream African leafy vegetables um, into food security and nutrition um, policies. And I've highlighted one particular toolkit that the BFN project has uh, produced, the BFN Mainstreaming Toolkit, which, uh, can, which illustrates how to do this, um, if anybody is particularly interested. This is necessary in terms of developing policies, new policies, which incentivize um, the production and consumption of African leafy vegetables, um, but also more specifically through linking African leafy vegetables to public food procurement and also to, to school feeding programs. And there's many good examples of other countries that are doing this kind of work for other neglected and underutilized species such as, as Brazil. Another key area um, where in terms of policies and enabling environment can be improved is the opportunities that arise in terms of revising and updating food-based dietary guidelines and also school nutrition guidelines so that they better reflect the importance of African leafy, leafy vegetables in local food cultures linked to nutrition, diets, and also environmental sustainability. And again, I highlight Brazil as, as a, um, a very good example of a country that's, that's undertaken and achieved that. So multi obviously multiple other interventions are needed to improve the enabling environment for African leafy vegetables. But these kinds of examples combined with um, other recommendations and opportunities in production and conservation of African leafy vegetables, I think will go a long way to realizing a renaissance on the plate for African leafy vegetables. So before finishing, and this is my last slide, I just wanted to wrap up by this, um, highlighting some key um, knowledge products that might be of interest um, to those watching the presentation. The, um, the book on the left-hand side, um, deals with many of the outputs um, and outcomes from the, the first phase, uh, the first project that I mentioned. And the two publications on the right-hand side deal with the um, implementation and the successes and um, the work that we did in the BFN project, highlighting a lot of the work that we did in, in, in Kenya. So with that, I just wanted to thank you again for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Thank you.